Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. A very happy new year to you. Welcome along to the first Racing Post football postcast of 2019. You're very welcome. I'm Bruce Wellington. And this week I'm joined by Mark Langdon and Liam Finn from the Racing Post football desk. It's FA Cup weekend. We will be going through the best outright bets and looking at all the value wagering propositions from a plethora of live games on BT and on BBC indeed, plus all the rest of the weekend. Football from around the continent and the lower leagues. And also we will give you some outright fancies on who's going to win the cup. But we have to start, obviously, with the blockbuster, the biggest Thursday night game ever staged in England, I should imagine. It's Man City versus Liverpool tonight at 8pm. It's going to be a really, really crucial game in terms of deciding who wins the title. Paddy Power. We don't have anyone from Paddy Power today. It's the best sickness in the camp. Get well soon, lads. You'll be back next week. But I'm going to be the Paddy Power rep as well as your host. They bet evens Man City. 11-4 to the draw. It's 5-2 to two Liverpool. Mark, I've got to tell you this. I cannot remember a game which I find so difficult to predict, both in terms of who's going to score the goals and how many there's going to be. The reverse was 0-0. This could be 4-4. I don't know who's going to win it. So give, me, give me some help, because as things stand, it's a game to watch and save rather than bet on. Yeah, I, I think it is um, down to the fact as well that you know Liverpool... Do they see this as a free hit and an opportunity to sort of whack Man City out of the title race? Or are they conservative, trying to just keep them at arm's length? Because, of course, you know, the, the, the lead of, of seven points is, is more than enough, really. But ten points, I couldn't see that. I mean, I think I, I spoke to somebody yesterday that said that Liverpool would go to about one to seven if they win the game. So, really interesting from that point of view. He's quite a gambler, isn't he, old clock? He, well, he is, but in the Champions League, and this is maybe why I'm leaning towards Man City to win the game, in the Champions League, in the big away game so far, Liverpool have really disappointed. One shot on target in total away to Paris Saint-Germain and Napoli when they lost, bo lost both games. That shot on target was a penalty from James Milner. It wasn't the Liverpool that we've kind of um, seen over the last couple of years. So there was a conservative approach. Maybe he was a bit concerned by... Um, you know the the attacking qualities of those two teams, and he was, I think, in the game at Anfield. There's a lot of respect shown, so I'm not expecting it to be really high scoring unless there's an early goal. Early goal could blow the whole um, thing wide open, particularly if Liverpool get it. But from my point of view, I would back Man City around about evens to beat anybody at home, and I include Liverpool in that. I think, as Klopp said, Man City are the best team in the world, and um, I don't think we can be put off too much by uh, recent results. In all of those defeats, the opponents, Chelsea, Crystal Palace and Leicester, scored with their first shot. In two of those, I mean, the goal from Andros Townsend and Ricardo Pereira, I mean, they're, they're, you can't really do much about that as, as a defensive unit. I mean, De Bruyne, if he comes back, improves them massively in midfield. Aguero's back, he missed the Chelsea game. Fernandinho. Fernandinho's back as well. I, I just think that even money... Um, I'd rather be on City and I think that City's minds are focused they know what they've got to do in this game if Liverpool get caught in two minds as to whether to play their normal game or be a little bit defensive that I'm, I'm not sure that will suit them as we saw in the Champions League so um, Man City for me uh, in what should be a great game What's the scoreline going to be? 2-1 two, 2-1 one. Two, one. Liam what do you make of this one? Yeah, I completely agree with what Mark said, really. I'm going Manchester City to win and under 3.5 goals, which is probably about a general 21-10, to 10, I was finding. Um, we expected goals when they met earlier this season because it was such a high-scoring fixture last campaign. Um, but obviously, as we know, that ended goalless. Riyad Mahrez missed a chance to actually give Manchester City the win in that game. Um, but we've seen a noticeable difference in Liverpool defensively this season. Virgil van Dijk, Alisson, they've tightened up at the back. Um, and we were talking about how Liverpool are going to approach this game. I actually think... Um, having seen how Jurgen Klopp set up in big games in, past, in the past with Borussia Dortmund against Bayern Munich, I think he'll go into this game um, setting Liverpool up conservatively. I think um, a no draw press. No, I, well, naturally that's part of Liverpool's game now. But I genuinely think that um, the way they'll go into it is they'll look look at it as a, a game where a point is actually quite a good result for them, and it still um, gives them a very good advantage in the title race. We know City. Um, they can blow teams out of the water, but they're also very good at grinding out a result. 
Um, three of their ten meetings against top six last season um, saw them win. Uh, only, only sorry, only three of their ten meetings saw them win by two or more goals against the top six last season. And uh, their five games against the big six this season have featured just nine goals. So, um, and then of course we've talked about Fernandinho returning uh, to Manchester City to shore up that midfield. That's been a key issue for them. Now they've got him back. I think they can they can really go for it and, and get the win. Only won two of the last 13 against Liverpool, Mark. Yeah, I mean, they've got a horrendous record, particularly at Anfield, um, you know, in, in, in this contest. I, I don't read too much in to the head-to-head. -head. I think the, the more important head-to-head -head is that Klopp has a winning record against Guardiola. Now, if when you consider what he's had to work with and what Guardiola's had to work with, uh, that is a that is an interesting one um, in, in Pep Confidential, the, the book that sort of uh, followed Pep Guardiola through that season in Bayern Munich. He's so concerned about teams on the counter-attack and that Amazon Prime um, documentary, you know, there's that bit where he's sort of really, wor really worried about Liverpool and he changed his whole team around to try to stop them in that Champions League game. They were 3-0 down inside half an hour. Um, but, at, you know, this is not at Anfield. This is at the Etihad and um, I think that will be a difference. If you remember the second leg in the Champions League, there was a big moment when Man City had a goal wrongly chalked off. If that goes in, we could have been looking at an, an incredible comeback. As it was, you know, that they the, the nature of the beast were the game. They had to push forward, uh, even when they were winning and they got done. Um, but I, I I thought that City were were well on top, and Van Dijk played in that game. And I thought if anybody was sort of the better team in that first game, it was it was probably City as well. So I still think Man City are the best team in the Premier League, the best team in Europe and therefore I'd back them evens to beat anybody. Oh, Mark, if they do win, do you think they'll go on and win the league or do you still think that four-point gap will be I, difficult? I, I to think the four-point gap still, I still make Liverpool, I would still make Liverpool the favourites even if they, 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 they lose it. I mean, they haven't lost this season. They've been to most of their hard away matches. It's going to take a, it's going to take some kind of collapse or bad fortune from them. I don't see a collapse, but if City have had these bad bits of luck then so can Liverpool you know over a whole season so I would still make Liverpool the, the slightest favourite so. Any other bets any specials any derivatives that catch your eye Liam or are you just going to go with your 21 to 10? I'm happy with my 21 to 10 um, but I would of course look at someone like uh, Bernardo Silva um, to score first perhaps in this game for Manchester City um, he's always playing in advanced advanced roles for them and uh, I think that he could get on the score sheet um, I also um, think that Raheem Sterling you know we've known how uh, you know, assists and goals this season has contributed so much to Manchester City and uh, as I say, I don't think it'll be a high scoring affair but if you're looking in the goal scorer market those two would probably be my, my tips. Anything else from you Mark? Um, probably in terms of the goal scorers, I mean I, I think that I always, in big games, set pieces um, I, uh, so Laporte would be one on one side and Van Dijk um, for, for, on the other one. In terms of the corners, um, Man City um, I think I think this is where they, they may dominate. They're in for about six and a half. I think they might be able to get over that. They had six at Anfield and they weren't really you know they weren't really pushing on. And Guardiola was asked in his pre-match presser, how do you kind of how would you deal with it if you one nil up? And he said, well we'll try to score the second and the third. That's the best way to defend. So um, I, I don't see Man City sort of allowing Liverpool onto them so I, I think that they, they might be able to rack up the corners because normally if a team goes in front they kind of sit back and you know you don't really want that from a corner bet but I think the best way to defend against Liverpool City can't do that no can they, they can't I mean, that no. so I, I just it's, I think you've got two ways of winning that one either City are madly chasing the game and putting on pressure or they, they're just playing their normal game I don't think they I don't think they sit back probably until like there's two minutes left Fantastic. Really looking forward to this one. Just a quick one, final question on this man of the match, Mark. Uh, if De Bruyne starts, I'll go him. Liam? Uh, Sterling. Brilliant. Really looking forward to it. Back with FA Cup next. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Hi there, it's the Racing Post Football Postcast. Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon and Liam Flynn looking ahead to the FA Cup, which kicks off this weekend. The games are spread between Friday and Monday. Loads and loads of TV action. Before the boys get into their best match bets, we will take a little look at who's going to win the FA Cup and our friends at Paddy Power bet as follows. 4-1 to one Man City, 13-2 Liverpool, 7-1 to one Man U, 15-2 Chelsea, 8 Tottenham, 
9 Arsenal, 16 Everton, 25 Leicester, 25 Wolves, 25 West Ham, 33 Watford and 40 to 1 Bar. Boys, before you tell me who you think will win their pick up, I'm going to throw a little stat at you. 26 of the last 29 FA Cups have been won by a team which currently sit in what we know as the big six. So is there any point looking beyond them, Mark? Um, not for the not for your main bet. I mean, I, it's sort of illegal to not have one long shot in in sort of your anti post FA Cup bet, but you are playing for the place, and there's been a, there's been a fair amount of places within, um, you know, in, in recent years, or even to getting to the semi finals. It, get, it keeps you going, doesn't it? Yeah, from, and a half and the odds to two. You've yeah, got half a chance, haven't you? I, um, I, I mean, the, 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 I think the main bet. I, I I think Tottenham are probably the ones, and they've obviously got this. Um, phobia of winning trophies at the moment, but they, you know, they keep reaching the semi-finals. I think if you keep putting yourself in position to win competitions, then eventually you'll get over the line. They're a bigger price than Chelsea and Manchester United, and I mean, on very little on the evidence of this season that you could say that either of them two teams are better than um, Tottenham. They're great to see him play at Wembley, wouldn't well, it? Well, yeah, yeah. They I don't, mean, fans <laughs> don't seem to run their way to Wembley anymore. I mean, it was really interesting, though. You have a look at the prices last year for that semi final against Manchester United. I mean, Tottenham went, were pretty short, you know, to win that game. You know, um, quite strong favourites. And, and that suggests that there is, at least in the in terms of the markets, there is an advantage to Tottenham playing at Wembley. Um, the, the distraction for them is that they're still in the League Cup semi-finals. They've got this Champions League game against Borussia Dortmund, but they're two pick em games. They could mm. they could be out of both <coughs> competitions in um, you know sort of you know mid February or whatever, and then the FA Cup becomes the absolute main priority. I, I just think that in comparison to some of them other teams, I see no reason why they're. Um, eight to one, and the, my, my outsider would be Watford. I think that you know they've got a nice, easy game against Woking uh, in the FA Cup third round. You expect them to easily come through that one. They're eighth in the Premier League. They've taken some notable on scouts. merit as well, aren't they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's not much I don't think between a whole stack of them teams. I mean, Wolves would be the obvious ones in terms of who I think could be the best, but they've got Liverpool. So um, you, you want somebody, I think that you. you you think can go, you know, pretty deep in terms of a nice easy starter. And Watford would be that one. Delafeu and Dini up front gives them good options. They're decent in midfield with Decore. Um, you know, defensively, I think they are capable of shutting teams down. I mean, sort of against Chelsea, that was quite a hard slog for Chelsea. They had the three all against Bournemouth the other night. But I think generally speaking, you know, they, they deserve to be top half, yeah. Fair enough. Liam, who's your main fancy? Um, I'm also going for a bigger club. I'm going for Manchester United. Um, I think that you look at the rest so of the... you're going for a bigger club. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, I think you look at the rest of the top six and they've all got quite serious distractions this season. City, Liverpool with the title race could even include Tottenham in that if you want to. Um, you've then got Chelsea and Arsenal looking top four. Arsenal as well and Chelsea with the Europa League distraction. United are still in the Champions League, but I think realistically speaking, Speaking, I can't see them going that deep into the competition. And the FA Cup presents the best chance for silverware for them this season. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, he's had a good start there with um, wins over pretty mediocre Premier League clubs, in fairness. But uh, I think that he'll want to state his claims of potential uh, long-term appointment and winning the FA Cup could be a way of doing that. Um, they've got a fairly comfortable start um, against Reading um, and they've won 14 of their last uh, 17 FA Cup matches and of course uh, we saw them make the final last season as well. If you back Manchester United you know you're going to see them all the way to Wembley. Oh God, so it's, uh, uh, we'll come to that later <laughs> for that mustn't miss game at home to Reading, yeah looking forward to that. Uh, have you got a long shot for us, Liam? Um, I like the look at 5-1, to one, roughly, I think. Uh, Leicester to make the semi-finals. Um, I mean, they took Chelsea uh, to extra time um, in the quarter-finals last season. Um, we've seen with their recent you know, victories over City and Chelsea and even away at Goodison Park, which isn't an easy place to go, they do have a big game mentality about them. Um, they've certainly got the players in the final third to cause problems. And, yeah, I could see them making the last four. OK, I am going to go for Chelsea. Um, I just think that they, they might find themselves in a position where they've got uh, not much else to play for at that point. Uh, I think they've got a deep squad and I think 15 to 2 is perfectly OK. And my long shot is Brighton. Oh, it pains me to tip them, but I do, I do think they've got... I know they've got, obviously, a tricky test at Bournemouth the first time, but it's 66 to 1. I just think they're far enough out of the relegation battle to be able to have a crack at this quarter finalist last year. I think they might give you a run for your money. Right then, let's get stuck into the live games 
We'll start at 7.45. It's Tranmere versus Tottenham. Is it still called Prenton Park or have they renamed uh, it? I'm I sure. believe so, yeah. yeah is I it? It's still oh, called fair play to them yeah. for resisting the urge to call themselves the Jack's Lawnmower Centre <laughs> Stadium or something. So, Friday night always used to be to uh, Tranmere. Tranmere. It did, yeah, when they were... You'd remember that. Up. You certainly wouldn't. You wouldn't even know who St. and Greaves are. But we used to watch St. <laughs> and Greaves on a Saturday lunchtime. They always used to show you the highlights of the Tranmere game the night before. So, it's BT2, 7.45, Friday night. Tranmere versus Tottenham and Paddy Power bet. 13-1 to one Tranmere. 11-2 to the draw. 1-6 to six Spurs. Liam, you've tipped... Um, no, you haven't. Mark's tipped Tottenham to win the cup. You've tipped Man United. Is this a PBS? I think uh, Spurs. I don't think Spurs will have any issues away at Tranmere. I'm going to. I think Tottenham to win and both teams to score. That's quite nice. At 19 to 10, um, Tottenham have actually won 17 of their last 18 FA Cup matches against um, teams in the lower divisions. Um, they have the best away record in the Premier League. They've shown that they can travel well. Um, you know, they've gone and uh, got a draw at the New Camp in the Champions League, beaten Arsenal at the Emirates. I don't think Prenton Park will be a particularly intimidating place for them to go. That said, uh, I think Tranmere could get on the score sheet. They have lost just once at home this season, um, and they've scored in 12 of their last 13 matches in uh, all competitions. So, Mark, what do you know about Tranmere? I was, I was just working out what PBS is, but potential banana skin. Correct. So right. I, I got there in the end. I saw Tranmere a couple of weeks ago at Notts County, um, two days before they played in the second round replay that set up um, this game. Um, the striker, the Norwood's very lively, um, plays on the shoulder, um, out wide, Jennings and Smith. I think they will call Tottenham the odd um, You're the saying, odd you, you look to me as if I know Jennings and Smith. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Colin Jennings um, oh, okay. scored the, the, the other day. Um, Jonathan Smith? Is um, it? Definitely Jay Smith. Um, they had got a right clogger in midfield, McCulloch, um, who... Uh, maybe sort of a couple of the younger Tottenham players. Uh, I'm expecting it to be a reserve team. May not enjoy coming Skip up. Skip and uh, wink. Yeah, I mean, Skip will definitely play. I'm trying to work out the Tottenham team. It does depend on injuries, but it'll probably be Gaz and Eager in goal because they've got Chelsea in the um, League Cup on Tuesday. So I mean, you're looking at four. If you're looking at Skip. Um, Walker Peters. Walker Peters, maybe even Nkudu, the lesser seen Nkudu. Don't see much of him. Urente probably be up front. But Lucas Mora, expect him to play. He got three goals in December. He's 5-1. to one. Um, Best price, 9-2 to two Paddy Power to score first. I mean, tends to play up front these days for Spurs. I mean, you know, if you can score away to Barcelona, um, I'm, I'm sure you can. You, you, know, you, you should have to pace the trouble. Tramir, just one issue with Spurs. Struggled last season, Newport and Rochdale took them to replays and I think that's because of the Wem they've got Wembley on their head and, and that becomes a really important part for these lower league teams to get to Wembley and so you know, you know if you draw this game, you go to Wembley, it's probably a harder game than if they were still playing at White Hart Lane but I mean there's still an obvious class difference. So Lucas to score first but Tramira, I had them down a sort of mid table -ish in League 2, maybe sort of ninth to 12th. OK, we've got the thriller of the weekend, 12.30 on Saturday, BT Sport 2. It's Man United versus Reading. Absolutely zero chance of an upset because Reading got thrashed in the league at home to Swansea. They're completely out of form. Man United obviously have now suddenly transformed themselves into the greatest team in the world. Um, I don't care who wins it, but the boys might be able to stimulate some interest with a bet. The match prices from Paddy Power, 1-12 to 12 United, 20 Reading, 17-2. to 2. The draw, Mark Langland, should I give a toss about this? Uh, well, <laughs> well I, I do. As a, as a Spurs fan, I'm hoping Manchester United win virtually every game from now until the end of the season. And Oli Gunnar Solskjaer definitely deserves the job <laughs> long term, hands off Poch. Uh, I, I think that United will win this game comfortably. I saw Reading on Boxing Day at Millwall and they, they did okay in that game. Uh, Jose Gomez, their new manager, passed, passed, passed. They had like a, even though they had a man sent off inside 10 minutes at Millwall, they still won the possession count. And at half time against QPR in a 0 0 draw, they were up 70 odd percent um, away to QPR uh, percentage wise. But then, of course, they've got nothing really between the boxes, and Swansea um, destroyed them uh, the, the, the other day on New Year's Day. Um, so I'm going to go for Man United to win, uh, to, to cover the two goal handicap. I, I, I don't think that sort of possession based game when you're up against a team that's so much better than you will work well. They play out from the back, and it didn't work particularly 
great against Millwall. I don't think it will work against Manchester United. I looked at the United bench. Sanchez, Lukaku, Lingard, Fred, Young. I mean, they can make as many changes as Solskjaer wants. Fred yeah. Young, good player, Fred isn't Young. he? Good old yeah, Fred yeah. Young. Freddie Young. <laughs> um, so I, I think United, are, they, they may they may even get this minus two wrapped up by half-time. I think it'll be really easy. Maybe something like 4-0. The thing with Manu, isn't it? I mean, we saw that last year. That, the first 11 might not be competitive in the context of the top six, but they've got 22 good players. They yeah. can't pick a bad side, can they? No, no. It's just the attitude of those picked players. But obviously... They're all um, they're all up for it at the moment, and they're they're out to prove a point, and that point is that the reason they were doing badly was because of the manager and nothing to do with them. Um, I also heard a rumour that Ferguson's doing more than more than just bits and bobs at Old Trafford. So I mean, if Solskjaer's got you know somebody like that to lean on, um, that can only help him. Yeah, interesting. So you're going for Man U minus two. Yeah. Yeah. All right then, Liam. What have you got? I've got exactly the same tip actually. Um, I think you've got to take. Show me your notes. <laughs> no, go on. <laughs> I believe you. I, um, you've got to take. Right, the... very neatly. It's got, got James Beautiful. Milton S. No, not quite James Milton because James Milton <laughs> uses Found. the fountain <laughs> pen, <doesn't laughs> yeah. so that he always has the edge. But that's very nice. Um, yeah, no, I think you've got, you've got to take the Man U results so far with a pinch of salt. Um, but what they have done is they've beaten teams they're expected to to beat um, and I think they can do so against Reading as well um, you know they scored seven goals in their first two home games under Solskjaer he's got a bit of a tune out of Pogba um, as Mark mentioned there's a change in attitude about them now they'll really go into this game um, wanting to put in a solid performance and I think they can blow Reading away they've only lost once at Old Trafford this season um, and Reading um, obviously playing this new passing style under their new manager I think if they go to Old Trafford and attempt to do that then they could be pulled apart they've They've only um, they've also fired blanks in five of their last six away matches, um, and you know as I said earlier, United are my tip for the FA Cup this season. They perform well in the competition, and they scored 12 goals on their way to last season's final. Righty ho, another mismatch on BT Sport two at 5:30. Well, potential mismatch, we don't know. Uh, it's Blackpool versus Arsenal. Blackpool 11 to one, five to one the draw, one to five Arsenal. What's the edge here, Mark? Um, uh, this was the one I struggled with. I eventually fell on Arsenal to win by two goals. I mean, Blackpool gave them a decent go uh, at the Emirates. Um, eventually, Arsenal came through, but Blackpool, I don't think, are playing as well now. It's only one win in nine and only one goal in four. I'm expecting Arsenal to make a lot of changes, but given the you know the the run everybody's been on, uh, but they, they've done I okay. Saw, can I just say with with Blackpool the other day? I'm sure I saw a video where virtually the entire ground had been taken over by yeah, Sunderland fans. Yeah, uh, Sunderland had nearly eight thousand there <laughs> in a ten uh, because obviously a lot of their fans are against the owners, so they're not. So there's like a a big protest at the moment going on. So a lot of if you've got a decent following, you are turning it into a home game. You know, like. Um, you know, somebody like Luton would take a lot there, and, and Portsmouth probably uh, as well. And Arsenal, you know, it, it's a, it's a good trip, isn't it? Blackpool away mm. for the supporters on a Saturday night. Um, uh, it could be a chance for some of these um, Arsenal youngsters that we've seen in the Europa League play, and they've actually done okay. So Arsenal to win by two goals, and I think they're probably safe enough for your Akers. Okie doke, and Liam. Pains me to say it, but I think I'm going for a Blackpool draw double chance in this game. I actually saw the reverse fixture in the League Cup. I was at the Emirates for that game. I was very unimpressed by the Arsenal performance that day. Um, I've generally been impressed with an I Emery this season and the way we've been playing, but I think uh, on that particular occasion, I think it was evident that Arsenal's second string isn't kind of on the same level as the second string sides for, say, Tottenham, Chelsea, Manchester City, etc. Um, astonishing statistic. Arsenal kept just one away clean sheet uh, in the league in 2018. Um, um, and I think that was against Huddersfield. Um, and I think Blackpool can just capitalise on those defensive issues. In the game against them, we had um, Julian Pleguetsuelo playing at the back, who's barely had an appearance. I think that may have, may have even been his debut. Um, and the, like I said, the Arsenal second team simply isn't good enough. We don't know how Unai Emery views the FA Cup yet, obviously. We don't know whether he views it merely as a distraction from, say, the Europa League and top four aspirations, or whether he's going to take it seriously and field a strong side. But um, on that basis, and also on the fact that, obviously, Arsenal were um, knocked out in the, this stage last season, Season by Nottingham Forest in the third round, I, I think Arsenal might might struggle at Blackpool actually. So the bet is Blackpool or the draw. Blackpool or the draw, yeah. And who do you think will be up top for Arsenal, Liam? Um, it would be interesting to see whether or not Aubameyang or Lacazette get a run out. But personally, I, I, I expect to see someone like Eddie Nketiah perhaps um, being given a go. We also saw um, Saka come on um, to make his first appearance for Arsenal against Fulham. I was at that game as well and. 
Um, I think he's uh, he's got you know pace and abundance. So uh, without that I've guy Welbs, they don't have that much striking options. No, exactly. That's what I mean by having seen our bench this season. You'll have still two, three recognisable names, someone like Mohamed El Nene or something, and then the rest of the t uh, the bench will be full up of of youngsters who just come into the the first team. Uh, the just just come into the squad. Um, Emil Smith Rowe for me has been the standout young player for us this season. I've been seeing him play several times, and um, he obviously scored in that game against Blackpool uh, in the League Cup. Uh, but yeah, up top I expect someone in Ketia or Saka possibly. Um, okay, thank you, chaps. Let's do Sunday and Monday after this break. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer thirty days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com. Welcome back to our special FA Cup weekend football postcast. It's Bruce Millington, Mark Langdon and Liam Flynn chewing the fat and looking ahead to what are hopefully some good value betting opportunities in the Cup on Sunday and Monday. We'll start with the 2pm game at Woking. What's Woking's ground called? Cherrywood Road? No, that's Farnborough. I can't remember. No, I'm just hoping you don't play. They both for both. They play for both yeah, clubs. Yeah, we've got no here. chance. Would they play <laughs> for both <laughs> clubs? Here. Absolutely none whatsoever. No, it's Woking v Watford um, at 2 p.m. on Sunday. Paddy Power bet 14 to one Woking, 11 to two. The draw one to six Watford. Mark Langdon has already told us that Watford Hart are his idea of the best FA Cup outsider. So presumably, Mark, you're not expecting any slip ups here. No, um, I. Colleague Steve Davis though has come up with a good stat for this game in that twice a non-league team has since the Premier League uh, came into existence twice the non-league team knocked out Premier League opposition and Andre Gray was involved in both of those um, encounters of course the Watford striker now he's in the Burnley team that was turned over by Lincoln and he was in the Luton team that beat um, Norwich so. Um, maybe he's one to leave out um, if Harry Garcia has um, got any kind of superstitions about him. But I uh, know I think Watford um, win this game easy enough. There's a the gap between sort of you know Premier League and non-league is probably about as big as I think it's ever been, and that's partly because the, I know Lincoln did well, but the National League I, I, I'm not sure about the standard of it anymore. Like the teams that are coming up into into League Two. I mean, Tranmere are doing, they're doing okay, but they, there was a time when they were sort of coming into League Two and were almost favourites to win it. There was no difference whatsoever. I'm not sure that that um, is the case anymore. In it's incredible. Last year, there were no non-league teams exactly. in the third yeah, round of the exactly. FA Cup. So it's I think that's still one of the most astonishing stats I've ever heard. So I, I think there is, um, I, I don't know the reason for it, but I definitely think the National League is struggling a little bit in terms of quality uh, at the moment. In terms of bets, I was... I was looking at Quina um, to score first, the, the, the Portuguese lad that they got from West Ham who's got a YouTube highlights reel that would sort of match Ronaldinho. He scores some unbelievable goals. Um, I'm expecting him to get a run out in a game like this and at 9-1 to one, he may even play up front, um, certainly in an attacking sort of wide or an attacking sort of midfield position, he may give you a, a run for your money. But I mean, Can you just spell him for me? Q-U-I-N-A. Easy, OK. Yeah. Queener, first scorer for Mark. Uh, Liam, have you got anything for us on this game? I think the best value in this would be both teams to score. Um, again, as we said, there's you know a golfing class between the lower leagues and the Premier League now. Um, but Woking, you know, these are both two very offensive sides. Woking have scored 47 goals in 22 matches this term. Of course, you have to take into consideration that's not against a Premier League defence, but um, they've scored 12 in their last four. and. I think Watford uh, under Javier Grazia have um, very open attacking football. As we said, midfield and up front, they've got some good options in Delafeu and Dini, but at the back, I still think there's a vulnerability there. I don't think that they should have an issue. I don't think that they'll get knocked out, but um, I definitely think they could concede. So both teams to score have conceded in each of their last 10. So. And that is, of course, at the Kingfield Stadium. I'd like to say it just came to me, but it came to me via Google while the lads were talking. 4 p.m. Newport versus Leicester, another interesting one. We saw, as Mark referred to earlier, uh, Newport give Tottenham a real battle in the Cup last season and they face another Premier League giant here. They've got home advantage. They're 17-2. to two. It's 9-2 to two the draw. It's 1-4 to four Leicester. Mark, will Puel um, give all his stars the week off here? Yeah, I've absolutely no idea what he's going to do. Uh, he, and this is, I think, one of the reasons why the Leicester fans are sort of against him is that 
they don't feel like they kind of know what the team's going to be, and maybe uh, as a supporter, it, you know, it doesn't matter. But I've, you know, like when you see like Ricardo Pereira might be playing right back, then he might be playing left midfield, and um, you know, he he's he's getting a good enough tune out of Leicester. They're seventh in in the Premier League, and but they're perfectly positioned to have a real good go at the cup yeah, this year. Aren't he, they? he got a lot. He got a lot of criticism for resting most players against Man City, mm. but he took Man City to penalties and then beat them and Chelsea in the Premier League. So he'll probably look at it and say, well, you know, I've done the right thing. Um, and he, he's somebody that gets criticised, quite a dour um, character, or he comes across that way. Anyway, I was looking here, I think Leicester will probably get through. I was draw half-time, Leicester full-time. This is down as the sort of really hard place to go territory. Um, I've been been on the train through Newport and um, it can it can be a bit sort of hostile even on the train never mind in, in the football stadium and they did give Tottenham a real going over um, last season they needed to bring on Harry Kane to get a draw and Leeds found out to their cost they got knocked out by them as well Premier League quality to tell in the end but maybe after a battle. Liam? I mean obviously with Leicester there's a slight concern you know having beaten City and Chelsea and then losing to Cardiff that perhaps they can't perform when there's expectation there but I still think they should get through this one I'm thinking Leicester and both teams to score um, Leicester do they just have two clean sheets in their last eight matches so there's certainly issues at the back there um, but at the same time only two sides um, have shipped more goals than Newport in League Two this season so they, they themselves um, have got issues at the back they're a top heavy side much like Leicester as we say, it depends on which team Cloud Pool decides to, to field for this match um, and which Leicester team turns up. Because as I Well, said, this is the field. trouble, isn't it? As I said in the columns, they've lost to Palace, they've lost to Cardiff, they've drawn to City and they've beaten City, Chelsea absolutely. and Everton. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, no figure. But yet they've put in absolutely no kind of show against Tottenham in another sort of high-profile game when they were beaten 2-0 as easy as you like. They are a very, a very odd team as they're 5,000 to 1 title success well, yeah. yesterday. They are the kings uh, of Yeah, they are. Yeah, they're aren't really they? difficult. But you're going to go Leicester and both, are you, Leicester Liam? Leicester and both teams to score, yeah. Okay, we've got a game on Monday as well, BBC, and it's competitive for the first time in this postcast. We're talking about a team that isn't about 20 to 1 on. It's Wolves versus Liverpool. 11 to 4 Wolves, 5 to 2 the draw, 5 to 6 Liverpool. Mark, Wolves have really confounded me. We talked just now about Leicester being difficult to pick, but I've seen Wolves, I think, six times this season and never once been impressed. They scabbed the win against us. They lost to us last night. They were terrible against Huddersfield, and yet they've got all these fantastic results and everyone, everyone's really positive about them. So I must just be unlucky. I, I think that they are a team that's idea, uh, that they don't like forcing the issue and that they, they maybe lack um, the, the players to do that. Um, certainly in terms, I think, of at the Premier League level, they're expected to beat Crystal Palace now and um, that doesn't always work out when you're, you, know, you have the ball. They want to play on the counter-attack, as we saw against Tottenham when they were really good on the counter-attack. I'm going to go for a, a Wolves win here. Just, I mean, we're speaking before Liverpool have played against Man City. I think whatever happens, it could leave its mark. Either Liverpool realise they're, you know, they've got this unbelievable chance to win the Premier League, or they start to think, oh God, City are only four points behind us. We need to concentrate on the Premier League. So I, I, I think that uh, either way, I'm, I don't really care what happens, but I think Thursday's game is important for Liverpool. And uh, we talk about squad depth as well, Mark. You know, you'd say Chelsea, Tottenham, United, City have all got deep squads. Less so Arsenal, but really. Is, is, can he put out a fantastic Liverpool it's, reserve team? It, it's an odd one. They've got quite a lot of versatility in midfield. It's in the maybe, I mean, you're looking at sort of Sturridge, Origi, Lalana. It's not bad. No. Um, it's, it's not bad. At the back, they've got big problems at the moment because all their centre backs are, are out, kind of in, in terms of who they could sort of rotate. You know, if you're having to throw Moreno in at left back, he's been, you know, found wanting on more than one occasion. So um, I, I think that Wolves. I mean, uh, Liam probably talk about this as well, but you know they've beaten Tottenham, they've beaten Chelsea, they've drawn with both Manchester clubs and Arsenal. I thought they were a little bit unlucky to lose two 0 against Liverpool in the Premier League game as well. First half they had chances. Liverpool were knocked out at the League Cup by um, Chelsea's reserves at the prices. I think I'll just go for Wolves. Who would you go for, Liam? I'm also going for Wolves. Um, I think they've been a better side away from Molyneux this season, to be fair, but um, they've won four, they won four of their six matches in December, as Mark mentioned, claimed the scouts of Chelsea and Tottenham. They're up for a big occasion. 
Liverpool, as we said, could quite easily be nursing a hangover from that Man City game, and I think regardless of the result, they will be. Um, and also, I think if, uh, there's perhaps a sense Liverpool feel they've got bigger fish to fry with the Champions League and the Premier League. Um, the FA Cup may not be a priority for them, and we could see rotation. And in that rotation, um, as we say at the back, there's certainly you know they, they don't have that great cover. Um, they don't have the depth and. I think Wolves can Wolves can hurt them with that speedy counter-attacking football we've seen from them. You know they've got a um, great versatile front three. Um, I think Gibbs White has impressed me this season in yeah, particular. Good, yeah. um, good and I that. think that style of football against a team that is uh, perhaps hit a little bit hard from Manchester City game. Uh, I think they could get something. And I thought they were uh, in fairness. I do think they were unlucky last night. Um, but <laughs> and I think I think. Uh, in what sense? <laughs> Okay, I, I think they had the opportunities there, and it was obviously two two late goals. Uh, One of which was offside. In, yeah, uh, I think that. Um, yeah, they, I think. I think they unlucky stretch in it. <laughs> I think it's a bit, you know, it's that come down from Wembley, wasn't it? They um, the old Phil Taylor effect. You know, mm, yeah, and then, yeah. They, they maybe just struggled with the you know having won at Wembley, the sort of mundaneness of a of a Molyneux game. Okay, let's look at any other bet you like. I don't want you to just give your naps away just yet. We'll do them. But any other FA Cup ties that tickle your fancy? We've got all sorts of stuff around Europe and in the lower leagues. What have you got for us, Mark? Um, yeah, in, in terms of the FA Cup, I mean, you have the team news is massively important. So I'll just chuck a, a few outsiders Can in. Can I just, on, before you do, will we be doing a live team news service? I'm always yeah, good on I'm, Saturday. Uh, Go to Racing Post Sport. Liam, are you in on Saturday? Oh, yeah, I am in yeah, on Saturday. Yeah, Liam probably be the man. I'm a, so uh, if you go on to Racing Post at about half past two and go on to sport, we will give you some fresh team news based tips and they're always worth heeding. But what have you got, Mark? Yeah, I mean, so in, in terms of, the, I'm going to go for some outsiders because like I say, team news is massive. So um, Hull at Millwall uh, was what I mean there. Hull are flying, they aren't are they? Absolutely. It's whether it plays <laughs> Bowen and Grasicki who have caused all the problems, but you know, about 13 to 5 at Millwall looks too big. Preston have got a lot of injuries at the moment, carrying like 11 or 12. Um, so Doncaster, who um, have got a lot of goals in them, about 4 to 1. Pompey, 4 to 1 at Norwich, who I, I think are going to be concentrating you know, primarily on going you, up. Won't Portsmouth be concentrating? They will, no. they will, but I, I, I just feel like I'd rather be on an outsider in yeah, that yeah. instance. Um, so, so that they would be one um, in terms of a more closer game. I thought Leeds uh, around about eight to five at QPR might might not be um, the worst of bets either. So they would be the ones in the FA Cup. But uh, I think you have at this <coughs> stage, I'd be looking to be backing outsiders. Okay, Liam. Um, I think it's a, it's difficult to find some value in the Man City Rotherham game, but I quite like the look of uh, Phil Foden, first goal scorer, about ten to one. Uh, he played in all of City's League Cup matches earlier this season. He actually scored against Oxford, um, and only Arsenal and Manchester United um, have had more league goals from midfield this season. Um, He'll definitely, I'm very sure he'll come into the first team frame. I had a look at uh, Diaz as well, but I don't think the price was as good. But um, Phil Foden, first goal scorer, 10 Love to 1. Love that. Okay, let's do the naps. This will not be beaten. Okay, uh, last year I seem to remember Eddie Howe resting absolutely everyone in the cup. Um, and I'm hoping that if he does that again this time, Brighton will be a bit of value at 3 to 1 to win there. Mark, what's your nap? Yeah, well, Bruce, all the naps won last week, so we, we had to travel up, so uh, the, the pressure's on to, to do the same. I'm going to go for Berry to win at Yeovil, and I know that anybody that follows the league too closely, they'll be a bit nervous about backing Berry. They've only got, um, you know, they've struggled away from home, only three away wins. They're fourth in League Two, and they're disappointed that short odds, drawn with Notts County and Cambridge, lost to Crawley and Port Vale. However, um, they are one of the best teams in League Two, and I don't read too much into home and away form. I think over time it kind of settles down. Yeovil, absolutely terrible. One win in 17. Their last home win was on August the 25th. Darren Way was given a new contract despite um, their the, the terrible run. Attendances are down. Some people are saying they won't go until he's sat. They were, uh, the ones that did go were calling for his head again after the 4-1 defeat at home to Cheltenham on Tuesday. Just a big difference here. I'm not sure home advantage is worth anything when the crowd, not exactly the most toxic of crowds, but even so, um, this is a good opportunity for Berry. 11-10. I know they're disappointed away from home, but this is a, 
should be a golden opportunity for three points. OK, Brighton, Berry, and Liam. Uh, Sheffield Wednesday to beat Luton in the FA Cup. I think you've got to be quite brave to oppose Luton in the league this season, of course, flying in um, their promotion pursuit. But um, Sheffield Wednesday are unbeaten um, in four matches since the manager left and won the first two, um, first two games to nil. I think they've tightened up at the back. Um, Luton's focus will probably be on promotion and in the league. Um, and I think they you know, limped past Berry in the second round, really. They weren't uh, particularly convincing, so I'll go for uh, yeah, Sheffield Wednesday. Even though they're still waiting for their manager to <laughs> deign to uh, finish his holiday, go yeah. and tick off a cricket match off his bucket list. Amazing, that, isn't it? Yeah. That good appointment, Mark, Steve, uh, Steve Bruce? Uh, it's not the most imaginative, is it? Um, but it's sort of the, the complete opposite of what they had before. Luakai came in, he was a foreign manager, right, that didn't work. Let's go and get a tried and tested championship one. I mean, the Aston Villa fans, were they were so angry with Bruce they just had him down now as a dinosaur and you, you do wonder if some of these sort of steady eddies if sort of the championship has moved on from when they were first there so um, it doesn't I, I wouldn't be going out to back them you know think putting them on the list for next season as a promotion candidate okay where are you this weekend Liam uh, I'm not actually at a game this weekend oh, no I'm not I'm afraid um, but no I've seen Arsenal quite a bit recently uh, I've seen the Fulham game the other day but. ok Mark you're going to take a game in yeah it, um, it was a very late um, decision Cholton against Sunderland was waiting for the F oh, that FA Cup for years yeah so um, I mean again we spoke about how many fans Sunderland took to Blackpool and how many that uh, I'm expecting particularly they've got a lot of, sort of London based supporters so uh, it should be a, a good atmosphere for a change at the Valley because obviously yeah. the crowd are um, dead against um, the owners there but the sort of big followings, yeah, it should be good. Have you still got Luton down as the likeliest winners of League One or do you think Portsmouth have nicked a little I unassailable think, uh, lead? I mean, I, I think Portsmouth are, are the most likeliest winners, but I mean, you know, Luton have slashed in price since we sort of were first talking oh. about them. They're in, was they two to one, I think, last time I looked. So I still think Luton are a really good team. I just... They, I want them and Barnsley. They cut each other's throats on New Year's yeah, Day. Yeah, you they? don't want to draw. <laughs> do you? I wanted it's one of them one to win. One point given away, isn't um, it? I wanted one of them to win. But there we go. Okay, thank you very much indeed, chaps. Thank you for listening. We're back off and running with postcasts in 2019. And if you enjoy these shows, please do make sure you rate, review, and subscribe wherever you're listening. We're back next Thursday, but in between times, we've got the racing postcast tomorrow. The boys looking ahead to a great weekend at Sandown, Wing Canton and elsewhere. We've got our regular Monday review postcast, looking back on all the weekend racing. And Wednesdays, golf postcast are back next week. Steve Palmer, myself and Ian McLaughlin. Hopefully you can join us for them. But if not, let's see you again next Thursday for another Racing Post weekend football postcast. Introducing Paddy Power's Beat the Drop. We're giving every customer 30 days free entry and a grand up front. It's up to you to keep it. All you have to do is answer 10 questions correctly. Play now at beatthedrop.paddypower.com.